appreciate you joining. Thank you. And, um, you know, it's always good to talk to you, man. Thank you. <laughs> appreciate it. I'm actually honored to have, uh, you know, your brand and you as well here in my home. So it's an honor for me as well. Right. And uh, speaking of which, before we get into that, um, tell us again your name and tell us what you do. Sure, absolutely. First name is William. Uh, those who know me well know me as William Earl. And those who don't know me, my name is William Earl Green. All right. So, William, you said you mentioned that we're in your, your home. So tell us what do you have here? Well, it, as you can see, my home is really small in size, but it's big in power and love and love with regards to the love for the music that I have uh, been so richly blessed and given. Um, pretty much what you see around me is just my tools that allow me to shape and craft music for the beginnings of various recordings that I've been working on as well as recordings that I'm about to work on. Uh, very simple, Yamaha keyboard, interface, the computer, which has uh, several different types of programs in it. And uh, this is where the magic begins, right here. You know, I always wondered, uh, you've been performing and, and been around so long, do you still practice? Is that still a part of your routine? It is. Or you just play so much. It, it, it is, and, and, and I, I want to answer your question with honesty and respect. There was a point by which my practicing was based on my performance because I was playing an awful lot. Where now my performances are centered around my shows in particular. Uh, the necessity of practicing is a lot more important because I want to make sure that each show that is given to an audience is on a very high level. So now I do try to spend anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half, if my time permits, to just uh, solely practice, working out certain uh, um, intervals, if you will, uh, use certain musical terms, uh, chord progressions, uh, how fast to play something, how slow to play something, um, and to also utilize that time in terms of my uh, singing as well that I've been doing a lot on my shows. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned about um, working on your music as far as your um, the music part and the vocal side. Yes. Now when I initially met you, you weren't doing as much vocals. Kind of what led to that transition? Uh, a combination of things. The most um, uh, apparent to me thing that occurred was the witnessing of the physical um, um, transitioning of my mom. My mom is the reason by which I am the singer that I am because of seeing how much she enjoyed singing. Uh, the knowledge of knowing how she and her younger sisters, when they were younger, they all sang behind uh, the vocals of Mahalia Jackson. Uh, my mom was also a choir director at the church. And so over the years of uh, reminiscing how powerful it was to be in her presence when she would be singing, as I watched and have witnessed her physical transformation from now not literally being able to talk, uh, I was more or less given the mantle of uh, continuing her vocal appreciation, her legacy. And uh, because I'm always singing whatever I play, it just made sense. Well, why aren't you singing then during your performance? Thus, I've started writing songs around my voice, uh, as well as producing songs uh, for other great vocal talents that are comfortable with me sharing with them how I interpret singing something. Not that I'm a great singer by any stretch of the imagination, but what's great about my singing is it is from the heart, it's pure, uh, it's in tune, <laughs> and um, it, it, it mirrors the soul within me. So that's the reason why I just chose to make it a part of my musical arsenal. Now, you know, some people may be a little hesitant because, you know, they may not consider themselves a natural singer. Like you said, you can be in tune, but maybe they're a little shy. Mm -hmm. Was that ever a problem for you, like trying to get over the fact that you may not be perfect as a singer? Absolutely. And it still is something that comes to mind when I do sing. Uh, I think one of the things that I have uh, learned about art is that art really piggybacks off of someone else's expression in whatever medium that you are artistically 
providing to people, whether it's through visual art, painting, uh, theatrical arts, uh, in this case, musical art. So it's hard to not think that your voice does not sound like somebody else's because that's how you've learned over the years. Now, at some point, you, you have to become confident with saying, well, uh, opposed to me trying to sound like some 700 people that you may have learned how to do this from over your career, you narrow it down to three or four people. And then eventually you want to become so acquainted with your own sound that it's not really necessary to sound like anybody else. Um, the market, from an industry standpoint that we are now um, <clears throat> operating in, unfortunately does not really craft itself around perfect singers. Uh, no disrespect to those individuals who have great careers at singing, but I think they will admit to you also that their level of perfection in what they do is really how they feel about their performance. It, they, they could sell five, seven million records, you know, but if they are really true about their art, they would have to admit that they still struggle with how they sound. Do they sound, you know, as well as these numbers indicate? Um, in my case, uh, I, I love singing. So with that, numbers are not necessarily any an equation and factor. It's because I have to do it. So you just um, learn to embrace your, your voice and whatever, you know, however you deliver it. Yes. Um, and fortunately, you know, having the musical skills in which to musically write and arrange something around my voice gives me a lot more uh, flexibility to do that. Where if I were not a keyboardist or a musician and I was only limited to singing, then I would have to craft my voice around what someone else would bring to me. So it makes it easier, um, simpler, if you will. Um, there's, there's so many very, uh, I mean, uh, there's so many different examples of how that is effective around certain artists. I think of Stevie Wonder. Um, you know, he although he can sing anyone else's songs, you identify his voice most with the songs that he wrote or that he has written. Uh, case in point with that is uh, the fact that Stevie Wonder wrote Tell Me Something Good, but you very seldom hear him perform that. But once you hear Chaka Khan do it, you don't think of Stevie Wonder, you think of her. So it's, it's the, it's the uh, beauty of how um, music allows an individual to showcase their individual thumbprint, their identity, based on their, uh, their either their skill set uh, or the level of the gift that they've been given, you know, from a spiritual standpoint. So you're able to craft a sound that basically matches your voice. Absolutely. Is that, that's kind of what you're doing, huh? Yes. And, and again, I'm not the only musician that does that or has done that. That's what we hear in the industry for the most part, with the exception of individuals who are not able to play an instrument and they only rely on the music that is being provided to them. Thus, they have to con kind of conform to that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So it's, um, it's convenient for me. I like it.